I would say it depends on how you want to be at music. If you don't know what you're doing, but you like what you're doing, continue doing that. But if you want to get better and you want to know, I would highly suggest to learn theory, basic theory. Um, here at Delta College, they do have a music theory class. It's called Fundamentals. I suggest you do that if you really want to start your career in music. Um, I know plenty of producers out there to this day who don't know a lick of music, but they do know how to do music. Uh, you guys familiar with Michael Jackson? Any of you guys? Believe it or not, Michael Jackson did not know a lick of music. He was sued for a song called Dangerous, and they asked him, Michael, do you ever go off sheet music? Michael's response was, no, I, I, I find it useless. I don't need sheet music. Well, he's right with today's type of music. Now, we have everything. We have digital stuff now that's taken over. Um, I'll get into it later on, but he, in a sense, he is right. Now, these days, we just get on a microphone and, and we rap. Or we have someone else do this stuff, and they go, well, how did you do it? I just put it together. Okay. When it comes to this type of category, I, I feel that you should know both. I think you should study the theory behind it, and then you know put it together. But when I what I'm here to explain to you is how to put it together. A lot of people don't know what a minor scale is. A lot of people don't know what a major scale is. Okay. Um, when you think of happiness, and again, this is just I'm just getting the basics. When you think of happiness, happy music, da 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 music, they're typically played in a major scale. Okay, a major scale gives it that upbeat feeling, that victorious feeling. Um, you guys hear uh, when Darth Vader comes into a scene, right? And you hear the dun 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 that music right there. That's all played on a minor scale. Okay. Now, as far as what type of scales, there's there's these things called scales and modes. Now, they're interchangeable, so someone's to say, oh, well, the scales are the same things. But in today's music, we have two main scales that you hear on the radio. You hear major, you hear minor. You guys, who, who out there are rappers? Anybody here rapping? Okay. Anybody here like rap music? Okay. So rappers love, they love, when they say that music, that's hard. They love minor scales. You're going to typically hear rap music in minor scales. Why? Because it gives you that deep, dark feeling that, <clears throat> like, you guys hear 50 cents in the club? That's played off a minor scale. Okay? Now, you guys, who likes pop music? Okay. So, you guys, anybody like Taylor Swift or anything like that? Okay. Well, Taylor Swift is now moving into the pop scene, or Britney Spears. Uh, they, they're mostly made, play major scales. Now, I bring up these. This, these scales because when you get into writing, you're not going to really go off a major or minor scale. You're going to go off these things called modes. And I'll get into that later. But what happens is, is, I know you guys hear Celine Dion where she has it go up to a climax and then she moves her hairs and it goes to a whole different type of song. Well, that's what we call modulation. Typically, when you write some movie scales, you're not going to stay, stay in the same key throughout because you want to give the viewer, the climax of the jump. If you want a scene where Arnold Schwarzenegger's coming in, right, he kicks the door open, right? You have a low song before he gets there, then it climaxes. Typically they use key changes called modulation. Now we get into this thing called modes. And <laughs> with modes, I use this picture lightly, but I like to say I don't punch like Muhammad Ali. This is how you remember the modes. Okay? Now the Greeks believed that the sense of frequency gave people the vibe. You know, have you ever listened to a song and it doesn't end right? There's cadences where it starts you like, oh, that sound has to land somewhere. Okay? And you're like, I feel off if it doesn't finish a song, right? If I don't feel a song. Any of you guys ever have that, that feeling? Where it's like, oh, the song has to end somewhere. Well, the Greeks believed in these modes. Okay. Now today, this, there's different names for them, but I'm going to show you them. But um, they felt that these modes made people feel things. As I talked about the major and minor modes, the major made you feel happy, the minors made you feel sad. Now again, that's I'm just talking basics. So the, you know, uh, if I get another workshop, I'll show you more in depth how to use these. But 
you're going to go off the first things I on you. That's what we call major. The next one in the scale degree, the second degree, starting with the second degree, you have Dorian. Okay? The next degree, you have Phrygian. Then you'll have Lydian, Mixolydian. Aeolian is what we know as minor. Then we have Locrian. Locrian is the darkest scale out of all of them. It's all flat notes, and it is one of those notes, one of those things that you'll hear like a lot of uh, metal music, like dark metal music will use Locrian scales, believe it or not. Okay, and then we're going to go back to I mean, again, which is major. So, what do these mean to you? Well, as a writer, you want to use these to give the people the emotion, the feeling on that. Now, you, you probably won't forget, but just remember this. Everybody remembers when George Foreman got knocked out by Muhammad Ali, right? Well, just know that you don't punch like Muhammad Ali. Like, that's how you figure that out. So that just goes off with how to know your modes, okay? So with that being said, we're going to learn the part on what are we, okay, so I know all this stuff, so what am I going to use to write it? Well, we live in the time of era where we have a thing called dogs. Anybody know, anybody know of a dog? Raise your hand if you know what dogs are. What's your favorite dog? You know? Uh, kind of Ableton or... Okay. All right. Perfect. You? Okay. So, the guys that answer probably know what I'm talking about here. But if you don't know, a digital audio workstation is where you record audio. Now, you can use a thing called a VST. A lot of people get this mixed up, so I'm going to clear this up. VST is, means it's just a virtual effect. A lot of people think that means it's, oh yeah, I'm going to put instruments. No, no, no. VST can come from EQing, uh, compressions, dynamic changes, and all that stuff, effects with reverb. Okay, that is that. But when you have a thing called a VSTi, that's your instrument. Okay? What that does is it allows you to create sound. Uh, a lot of people take a thing called MIDI, which I'll talk to you about. They take MIDI and they use that to control the sound. Now, as we spoke before, your main ones are going to be Pro Tools, Logic, Reaper, Cubase, Studio One. I, I would put Reaper on there, or not Reaper, but Reason, but a lot of, a lot of people don't use Reason as an audio DAW, they use it as an instrument DAW. When I say instrument DAW, they use it for beats, okay? So, um, the standard is Pro Tools. You cannot go to any studio without somebody using Pro Tools. So, uh, if you're going to get into this field, uh, I mean, I'm a studio one guy, but if you're going to get into this field, Pro Tools is what you need to master. You need to understand how to use Pro Tools. Once you know Pro Tools, you know all these, pretty much. Okay? Um, so, that's the first thing I would suggest you guys do it if you're going to start doing score, right? No Pro Tools, because when your engineer or your recording artist is with you, he's going to ask you, do you have some sense of recording? What are you going to use? Okay? So, the next step is MIDI. Does anybody know what MIDI is? Anybody in here? Have I sent a MIDI? You? Can you tell me what MIDI is? Um. Okay. Well, MIDI is a, mu is a uh, music inter instrument digital audio uh, interface. What MIDI, MIDI is, is MIDI is what I think, if you guys are going to start, this is what's going to control your music. Learn this. <coughs> If you, if you don't know anything from what I'm teaching you today, learn this, because this will take you everywhere. This is what I use. I think this is what anybody uses. I mean, uh, does anybody know how to play all the instruments in the world in here, in this class? Does anybody? You do? Okay, well that's great. You're very fortunate. But as for me, I'm a piano player. I try to play guitar as much as I can, but I suck. All right? As for drums, I know basics, but I can't play too well. Okay? What MIDI does, it allows you to control all those. You're not a cellist? Well, MIDI can make you a cellist. Okay? You're not a violinist? MIDI can make you a violinist. This is what's so important. What do you hear when you listen to action films? You hear orchestras. Believe it or not, with today's musicians, like we were talking about budgeting, they're not going to pay five different you know, cellists, five different violinists, five different uh, violists, and double bass, they're not going to do that. Why? Because they've got things called MIDI programs, VSTs, that allow people to play as if they are in the orchestra. Okay? So, 
The concept of MIDI was, as I said before, it's a music instrument digital interface. It was standardized in 1983. The Japanese, unfortunately, was the one that made it. Um, going back into the history, the Americans around the 1970s came up with the idea, but Japan, because they're such a small country and technology is more important to them, they backed it for us. It's known as computer music. Okay, and this is the argument I get with a lot of people. Um, you guys know John Vallette here? Yes. Okay, so me and John Vallette got in an argument. He wrote a song that goes, oh, it's MIDI. I'm like, okay, well, what do you mean by MIDI? He's like, oh, well, I used MIDI to do it. I'm like, okay, well, is it general MIDI? He goes, no, 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 it's just a sample. Okay, there's two different things you should know about MIDI. One, you have general MIDI. General MIDI is generated by your MIDI source of your computer. That's a synthetic sound. It takes a sound frequency, and what it does is it allows you to manipulate it, give you a bass sound, give you a drum kit. It, it can do many things. You guys play video games back in the 80s? You know how that 8-bit stuff? That's general MIDI. Do you guys remember the 80s movies, those funny movies in the 80s, the, the digital music? That was general MIDI. <coughs> what came to be um, the separation of it is now you have samples. They're activated by a MIDI controller. So if you touch a key, right, and I sample this clap, right, and you hit that key, that MIDI control bass will make that sound give you a real sound. So remember, know the difference when you're talking to people. Are you talking about general MIDI, which comes from the computer, or are you talking about MIDI that is sampled from a real live sound? Now, remember guys, we do have bits. Now, um, in the next class, I'll, I'll go into that. But just remember, if you start something, try to stay at 16-bit, okay? Because that's, that's the biggest the CD can hold. If you can go 24-bit, we'll get into that later into my other workshop. So, with that being said, I want to talk to you guys about how it all comes together. So now I gave you how to use your how to use your scales. Again, you guys should study. I really suggest you guys should study that, get into more depth into music theory because it can come into handy. Uh, until I took music theory. I didn't know that you would have to use a harmonic scale to give you that to give you that final cadence. Um, and I taught you about a DAW. What does a DAW do? It records the audio for you, and you can use it for VST plugins. And I told you what MIDI does, and that will connect to your DAW. Okay. So how this all comes together is by the MIDI controllers, as I was speaking. Okay. There's plenty of MIDI controllers. Believe it or not, they have a saxophone MIDI controller out now. It's pretty amazing. Um, but they have a thing called a MIDI import. You have MIDI in, MIDI out, and through. MIDI in goes to MIDI out. MIDI out goes to MIDI in. So it's kind of like in goes without, out goes within. All right? Will you, will you be able to see that today? Probably not. Um, but if you do have one, it's typically made in the 80s and late or early 90s. Um, they phased that out in the 2000s, so now you're with 2.0. We're moving to 3.0, but they found that it's really no different, but they will be moving to 3.0. So with working with a MIDI controller, you'll notice that it has these five pin ports. That's called the MIDI in, MIDI out, and through. Typically, they just use MIDI in or MIDI out. Okay. Through has to do with clocking, and I'll teach clocking again in the basic uh, setting. The standard controllers today are keyboards and drum pads. You guys know about any drum machines out here? Anybody? Okay. Didn't you know about like mini controllers on the keyboards, right? Okay. Well, they're typically used. The most popular right now today is what we call the Axiom 25. What this has is it has your drum machine and your keyboards. Now, a lot of people ask me, well, what's the pads used for when I can use it on the keys? Pads are pretty much for percussions. You want to tap your way out without having to hit another key? That's what the pads are. I highly suggest that for basics. If you're beginning in this, 25 keys is really all you need. Um, if you want to get more advanced, you can go to 88, you can go to 71, 61, or 49. 
but I would suggest if you want to learn basic, try the 25. It's real simple. I use it every day. I've written many songs doing that. Um, I've written a whole um, orchestra doing 25 keys. It's not hard. It's, it's, it's like I said, if you're creative, that's, that's all you need. You need to be creative. Just use your mind. Um, know what to look for in a script. Now, I'm going to talk about this. You're going to get two things. This either comes in pre-production or post. It never, rarely, rarely do you ever work in post-production when it comes to writing a score. In production, sorry, production. Because in production, like I said, it's all about the video at this point. Okay? Pre-production and post-production are where you're going to lead. Um, many times I get a script and they tell me, read what it says. If I didn't know those scales right there, I, I probably wouldn't know how to interpret the feelings and the emotions. I got a script, uh, speaking about it, uh, let's talk about that. Um, for RTV, what is it, 13 and 21? Uh, they're doing a movie. You guys should get involved with that. Um, I got a script, uh, seen someone describing something horrible, and I didn't get, I don't have any visuals, so I, I went off a chromatic scale, off a, uh, like I told you before, off a uh, Lowbrian scale. I gave it a very dark scene, so I was like, okay, I'm finished. So I gave it to the script writer. The script writer says it matches. They said, oh, I, I can see it. I can visually see what's going on here. I can visually imagine that. That's where you guys control it if you're into this. You, you're going to control what the person sees through their ears and through your body. But the eyes is going to control the video. But emotionally and you know internally, that sound is what's going to give you that extra 50% of video. On other times, I'll get a video and they'll say, follow what the video says here and you just have to follow what the video says. So if it's a scene where people are jumping, let's go with a major scale or something like that. Go with something just basic, right? Um, I was doing that, I was doing something back in Reno for an indie film and the, the guy had no idea what he was doing with music. So I played him a C major scale. Oh, he didn't like it. He's <laughs> like, oh yeah, I'm not liking it. So I was like, okay. I played another, and he's like, I love it. But, what I did was I played the same exact chords, C, E, G, but I did a thing called inversion. This is when your theory comes in. There's, there's, there, for block chords, for triads, which is three notes, there's going to be two inversions. There's the root, there's the first, and there's the second. Now again, I would highly suggest you take fundamentals and theories to understand what I'm saying, but that's where it comes in. Block chords may not be what the person wants, but if you place it right, you can do it. They'll they will, they'll hear a difference. So working with him, I did that. And he 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 was blasted away. I'm like, okay. So that came in handy. Um, also, when it comes to the really when it comes to the script writing, you have to. I, I would suggest you have to know the emotion of what you're doing behind that. You have to understand that you, how would you feel if you heard this song? What does that feel? Remember that. Don't just write a song and say, okay, well, it, this has to go. No, at the end of the day, it's how you felt when you write it. Do you feel like, I got this vibe? I feel scared? You know, if not, ask the script writer, how can I make it more scary or if they have, if they have more knowledge on the, on the fact. So, with that being said, um, we have a thing called, for you guys, so, I forgot to ask, how many people do know theory behind music? How many know how to like write music or know how to do that? You do? Great. There's, there's notations. When I first started, I just wrote everything off a keyboard. So, what I did was, I just played everything by ear. For the more experienced writer, they're going to want a thing called a score. Now that's what we talked about. Now, the word score can be used in too many ways. It can be used in audio or visual. Okay? 
as so my very first uh, very first picture I had was was a Bach uh, corral. Um, but what this does, you write out the notes. So, for example, uh, one time I had a guy, he, he asked me, he said, can you write out sheet music for us to play? I was scared because I'm like, I've never done this before. <laughs> I didn't know what those lines meant, the spaces meant. So I got a book called, um, I believe it was, Dummies for Music, right? <laughs> so he wanted something for like his class to perform. So I wrote it. At the time, I had this program called Finale. And what it is, is it's for people who know <coughs> how to write, read music. A lot of the times, maybe 50% of the time, if you're dealing with uh, large businesses or if you ever get into large, they're not going to want you to play it on the keyboard. They're going to say, write us a sheet music so we can have our, you know, our orchestra play. Believe it or not, this is where we come into question, do you need to know about music? If you're going to be in this professional field, I know a lot of people are going to tell you, you don't need to know music. I don't. Look at me, I'm making thousands. But music, I'm going to tell you, it's either you make it or you don't. If you expect to get rich on it, I'm going to tell you to quit now. Because some people, it's not going to happen. Okay? Um, what makes you better than the other person is your experience in music. Again, I'm not a professional. I'm not saying I'm a professional. I'm not telling you guys to give up. I'm not saying I'm the best. But I'm saying I know I've met people and I know what to look for. And when, you're, when it comes to scoring, this is the most difficult, the most difficult thing to get into. Because they're going to hire somebody, one, for the cheapest amount, and two, with the most knowledge. Okay? If someone says, I want you to write out a piece for me and give it so I can read it, you got to know, you have to know this. You have to know this. Because there's many times where I didn't get the job because why? I didn't know this. I didn't know this. Yes? Question. Okay, so if you're writing for like an orchestra, right, and for, for, for with orchestra, how do you know which instrument to use? Okay. Orchestra has many things. Orchestra is a, how you can say, it's a generic term. You can have your brass. There's brass. There's strings and there's percussion. Do you guys know what a piano is? It's actually a percussion. A lot of people don't know that. Okay, you have to see, you have to know what the orchestra contains. They're gonna say orchestra. Your job is to know what is it. Is it gonna be, a, you're gonna have a bassoon? You're gonna have a uh, tuba? You're gonna have clarinet? You know, there's woodwinds, brass, uh, strings and percussion. I think those are the four main ones that you're going to get. Okay. Uh, when you're doing, uh, how you say, ethnic, ethnic music, there's, there's, I, I can't really get into that, but there's also check out the uh, music appreciation courses, music four, music seven, will definitely help you on that. Huh? Yeah, you go. Yeah, uh, Miss Samuel, you guys should check her out. She's really good at that. Um, good, good. Um, but again, I lost so many jobs because I didn't know this. I feel bad because they were high paying jobs. <laughs> Just because they said, well, can you write me something tomorrow and can I re review it? I told them, well, I can play it. No, because we need to know if we can play it on, on sheet. Please understand that if you want to go further, learn this. This is very important. Now, obvious civilians and final finale, there are $300 programs. But you can use these free programs, no flight, and music score. I would suggest you use that to get started. Okay, uh, they are perfect for beginners, and I mean, you can start writing right away. You just click the notes where you want to. Again, um, I want to stress the fact that when it comes to note writing, know your tempo, know your key. Obviously, when it comes to key, that means scale and mode. And the big thing, a lot of people don't take credit for it, is know your time signature. A lot of people today in common music, we use a thing called 4-4. Four, four. That means four beats for every four. The, the quarter note gets four, which is four. The quarter note for every beat in the measure gets four. Some are three, four. Some are two, four. Some could be six, eight. Some could be eight, twelve. Like uh, if you're listening like to um, say classical jazz, so a lot of that's in three, four. 
Um, I don't know if you've heard a, a, I'm trying to think a big quick here, but uh, he's actually from here. He made a famous song called K5. That's actually 5-4. So you should really understand the theoretical theory behind that because that can definitely change the, mode, uh, the mood. Now, to wrap things up, guys, next Monday, I'll be teaching you guys the basics of recording, how to use MIDI, and what DAW to use, what best suits for you. Um, if you're basic, I'll show you the basics. If you're more advanced, if I'm lucky enough to get another uh, workshop, we'll go into more advanced. And hopefully I can get you guys into uh, RTV. Um, I'm not going to teach you guys the uh, ask and all stuff because that's what RTV is for. I mean, I really suggest if you want to know business, do RTV. If you're not in RTV, sign up for it next semester. It's, it's going to teach you guys the basics about radio and the basics about copyright. Because when it comes to scores, believe it or not, a lot of the stuff you hear is because they got the idea, the idea from somebody else. They got the idea from someone else. Remember, music is just like words. If you copyright, hello to the world, we love you. That's the only thing that they can copyright, right? Well, for music, let's just pretend that's the same notes. Well, instead of saying hello to the world, we love you, you could say hello to this great big world. We enjoy you. A lot of people do that. So, in terms of, of, of learning music, don't reinvent the wheel. <laughs> really don't. Be you. Like I said, I, I, I know I'm beating a dead horse, but I, I, I learned a lot off Michael Jackson. If you really listen to his songs, his big hits, he just took a few licks of someone else's song and said, I'm going to make it my own. If you have writer's block, do that. Nothing wrong with that. What makes you different from the other people is work ethic progress you make, and if you don't give up. There's times where I, I sat down and I said, I'm going to give up. I'm done. <laughs> Many times. Music is the hardest thing. One of the, I, I, I really appreciate art because it's the hardest thing to get into. It's, it's very, very, very rarely supported, but it's something that if you give up, then you're, not, you're never going to make it. Music, if you stay focused, you'll get it. So, is there any questions? Anybody? <coughs> Did I lose anybody here? Is there anybody has any questions that I can answer? Theoretical questions? Is there any of you, is your music on reverb? SoundCloud, yes. Yeah, SoundCloud.com oh. slash Martin Ross Music. Or, no, Martin L. Ross.